Well, guys, as um, as the uh, the broadcaster says, we're live. <laughs> yes, sir. Got it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, men of God, women of God, children of God. Welcome to the National Men's Prayer Hall, where we meet every Tuesday and Thursday from seven to seven thirty a.m. Central Time. Thank you all for joining us uh, on this morning's broadcast uh, here with the National Men's Prayer Call, where we are uh, transitioning into our 10th year. Uh, don't tell me what God can do. He's an amazing God. He's an awesome God. So we just want to give God the glory and the praise that he so richly deserves. So I just tell God, thank you uh, this morning. I want to thank God for all of the brothers that have joined us this morning. Uh, good to see your faces. Uh, you know what I mean? Just understanding that going into battle, and look at the soldiers and look and look at the, the men that I have, the support that I have to go into battle. So I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. And this morning, we have a, another soldier. We have, a, I'm going I'm to call him Dr. Charles Govey. Uh, he's coming this morning. So we're not going to take up too much of his time. We want to get out of the way and give him uh, the time that he needs. Uh, because I know that the Holy Spirit, he, he has been provided and equipped with a special message for us today on maturity. It says uh, the four attributes of maximizing manhood, maturity, consistency, strength, and decisiveness. And so we're on uh, the first point, which is maturity. So we're going to allow him the time he needs to uh, say what thus said the Lord. And so we just thank everybody for joining us this morning. So we're going to go into prayer. Uh, and without further ado, we just want to the tablet, unmute yourself. Have I been muted the whole time? Okay, okay. We just come as humble as we know how, Father. Uh, thanking you for yet another opportunity, Father God, to just give you the, the praise and the glory that you so rich and deserve. Father, we thank you for every family unit. We thank you for every man, Father God, that's represented uh, here this morning. Father God, we thank you uh, for the representation of your kingdom, Father. We just thank you, Father God, because we are made in your image and your likeness, Father God. So we just thank you, Father God, for giving us uh, the power uh, and the authority, Father God, to, to do magnificent things, Father God, to do uh, marvelous things, Father God, to, to be kings, Father God, to be uh, leaders of our household, Father God. We decree and declare this morning, Father God, that we are uh, kings, Father God, that we are the leaders, Father God, of today and not tomorrow, Father God. We are here, Father God, you, you've equipped us, Father God, with everything we need to help mold and, and shape and, and create uh, the leaders of tomorrow, Father God, because you created the National Man's Prayer College when, when you planted a seed in Dr. Green, Father God, and you provided us, uh, put us in a situation to surround us and equip us with men and, and of expertise to provide information for transformation, Father God. And here, we're speaking about the intellectual man, Father God, speaking about the, the mental man and want to talk about what it's like to be a man of integrity, what it's like to have a man of, of, of fortitude, Father. So we just thank you uh, for this opportunity, Father. We don't take it for granted. And Father, we just want to uh, be in a place, uh, Father God, of position and of obedience, Father God, to do what thus saith the Lord. So we thank you this morning, Father. I thank you for every man, Father God, that's represented on this prayer call, Father God. We ask and, uh, that they not experience any lack in any aspect of their lives, Father God, whether it's spiritual, uh, mental, whether it's in their relationship, whether it's in their businesses, Father God, that they continue to thrive, that they continue to grow, that they continue to experience overflow. And Father, there should be one, and there should be two who are, who are, who are going through uh, a hard time right now, Father God. We know uh, that you are still there with us, Father God. So we still uplift you, we still praise you, even in the midst of the storm. Yes, Father. We still experience storm. Yes, Father, we still experience depression. Yes, Father, we understand what stress is, but we also know who, who you are and we also know whose we are. So in the face of adversity, we are able to stand like trees planted by the rivers of water. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we thank you for our help, mate, Father God. We thank you for those uh, that stand by, by our side, Father God, not, not behind us, not underneath us, but Father God, directly by our side, Father God those that support us, Father God, those that uh, a lot of times would, would take, uh, stand behind the scenes, and Father God, and continue to prop us, prop us up, Father God, and give us uh, strength, Father God, when we feel as though we're underperforming. 
So, Father, we thank you for our help. May we thank you for our real, Father God. We thank you for our significant other. And, Father, we just go, Father God, into uh, this ministry, into this day, Father God, understanding, Father God, that uh, we're still in the midst of a crisis dealing with COVID-19. So we, we just like to thank you, Father God, for lifting, Father God, and empowering those individuals, uh, uh, healthcare workers, Father God, and those just, just that were still uh, performing, Father God, and, and they're taking care of their tasks in the midst of COVID-19. And Father, we ask that you uh, bless our school administrators, Father God, the teachers, Father God, that they continue, Father God, to nurture, Father God, and educate our children. Understanding, Father God, that they need it, Father God, that they need this kind of love, that they need this kind of nurturing, Father God, the right nurturing, Father God, the right kind of love. So, Father God, we ask, Father God, that you speak to their minds, that their, that their minds continue to develop, Father God. Allow us to be the seed planters, Father God. Allow us to be in a position to water and nurture those seeds, Father God. But these are our leaders of tomorrow. These are the pastors. These are the teachers, Father God. These are the next uh, national men prayer call leaders, Father God, that we are bringing up. So we thank you, Lord. Allow us, Father God, to be effective, Father God. Allow us, to, Father God, to be uh, in their lives, Father God, and then produce, Father God, the leaders of tomorrow. And Father, we just go uh, and thank you, Father God, for our uh, prayer list, Father God, and we ask that you continue, Father God, to lift those and keep those, Father God, and comfort those on our prayer list, Father God. You know their needs, Father God. You know what they're dealing with, Father God. Uh, let them know, Father God, that sometimes healing is not on this side. Father God, from an earthly perspective, Father God, we all we want them to come out of the hospital. We want them to come back from whatever illness uh, or you know, that they're dealing with. But sometimes we know that they're not coming back, Father God. So prepare us for those opportunities, Father. Strengthen our minds, Father God. Strengthen our, our hearts, Father God. And plan a word, and bid a word, Father God, in those individuals on our prayer list so that they understand, Father God, that even in our darkest hours, Father God, you're still a light in the midnight hour. And you know what the midnight hour is, Father God. The midnight hour could be death, Father God. The midnight hour could be job law. The midnight hour could be divorce, Father God. Whatever that person's midnight hour is, you're still there. You're still shining. Because we know that fear and faith can operate in the same space. So we're operating off of faith right now. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. The word says faith without works is dead. So Father, we know that there's some work that we have to put in. Thank you, Lord. But we know that you're right there with us. Father, as Dr. Charles Goldie come this morning, Father, we ask that you cover him, Father God, and lift him, Father God, and allow the Holy Spirit to take full reign. Father God, bless this word, Father God. And allow me, Father God, to experience and to just get a little bit of the overflow, Father. Whatever it is that I need to deposit into my bank, Father God, that's going to make me stronger, that's going to help me become a better husband, that's going to help me be to become a better business owner, that's going to help me to become a better administrator on the National Men's Prayer Call. Deposit those things into my, into my heart, into my soul. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, once again, I ask that you touch and bless every man, every woman under the sound of my voice. We need you, Lord. We can't do it without you. We love you. We honor you. And we praise you. And this is our prayer. In your daughter's son, Jesus' name, amen. Well, amen and amen again. Thank you, Brother Talbot. You just always consistently pray us uh, in the right way. Gentlemen, we're just, uh, this morning, we're just we're peacock proud and honeymoon happy that we, we get an op another opportunity to come together and lift up the name of Jesus. You know, this is a, we are an interdenominational prayer group of men that are uh, designed to improve and, 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 and just push men forward so that they can, maxim they can operate and maximize manhood. Uh, our mantra is this, spiritual growth times personal development equals a maximized man. And a maximized man is able to operate at peak performance. And at peak performance, men can be better husbands, fathers, sons, uncles, brothers, everything that's necessary, men are able to strive and come up to be. The enemy doesn't want men to be powerful. The enemy doesn't want men to, to, uh, to be able to operate at their maximum level. But God does. So this morning, uh, just like every morning, we're just honored to be able to bring to you a safe place to pray. But more importantly, that spiritual development, that personal development component that will allow you to become all that God designed and desires for you to be. 
Uh, this morning, we have a powerhouse. This gentleman is uh, a man of few words, but everything you, he says, you want to hang on, hang on to it, because he brings a powerful, insightful, poignant message that, that just laser targets you to where you need to be at. So men, where we need to be at is to be better. We need to be better citizens, better uh, countrymen, everything. This is what the National Men's Prayer Call is designed to do, to help you develop spiritual growth, but at the same time, have personal development so that you can be the best. So it's our honor, privilege, and pleasure to present to you Charles Goldie. Now remember, like, share, and comment on this and, uh, and go and like our YouTube channel as well. Dr. Goldie, are you there? I'm here. I'm here. Can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. All right. All right. Um, I was telling to Derek and, and, and you guys did it this morning. I said, everybody call me Dr. Goldie. I'm going to have to go get my doctorate or, or MD or something. Everybody keep calling me doctor. I, I need to be able to back that up. Uh, but, but, but I appreciate that. We're, we're going to talk about maturity this morning. And um, uh, I looked up a couple of definitions. I'm, I'm big on definitions, but I didn't. I know the gentleman on Tuesday gave us the Webster definition. I'll give us the, the Cambridge Dictionary uh, definition of maturity. And, and they had a couple. The first one says it's the state of being completely grown. Uh, the second definition is a state of being mentally and emotionally well-developed and therefore responsible. Um, and I really like that one, right? It comes in mature, maturity comes in different forms. Um, we've got physical maturity, right? We've got uh, emotional maturity. We have uh, professional maturity, right? Um, I'm not a Dallas Cowboy fan, but if you happen to be, you're hoping that Cooper Rush's maturation as an NFL quarterback happens quickly, right? What you're hoping for um, from the Cowboys backup quarterback as a Cowboy fan, is that external opposing pressures do not cause him to make mistakes. And in the event that he makes a mistake, he doesn't let, he doesn't dwell on it, right? He, he, he gets, he moves past it. Um, I would tell you that the people in your circle are hoping for the same thing from you, right? Trust me when I tell you your significant other is hoping that you don't dwell on past mistakes. Um, the folks in your circle are hoping that you don't get rushed into a bad decisions. My scripture for today is 1 Corinthians uh, 14 and 20. Brothers and sisters, do not be children in your thinking, yet in evil be infants, but in your thinking be mature. When we look at maturity from a business standpoint or in the financial sector, right, um, we say that something has matured when it has stopped growing or there's no future growth expected, right? Um, the, the market for pagers has matured. Nobody's going back to buy a beeper anymore, right? The, the, that has transferred into the smartphone industry and 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 it there's an argument at, at this point that maybe the smartphone market you know is is be, is really matured or, or or almost at that at that point that savings bond that your that Cedric that savings bond that your granny bought that you hold on to you can go ahead and cash that in it's matured it's not going to grow and and get any more interest it's it's done what it's going to what it's going to do on the flip side right the market for electric cars is still in an infancy or toddler stage, right? We are expecting growth for electric vehicles for at least 10 to 20 years, right? And I, and I thought about that and I was like, maybe that's why we're supposed to have childlike faith, right? Because it keeps growing, right? It's not that full grown, it, 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 it's, it's not done maturing, it, it, it's still growing by, by leaps and bounds exponentially in, in some cases. Um, our goal as men of God is to continue to mature while understanding that we may never fully be 
mature in various areas of our lives. It's kind of like how we we seek perfection, knowing that we'll never really get perfect, but we're gonna we'll keep that 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 strive. We keep that we keep that going. When it comes to maturity, there's a there's a difference. We need a we need a balance in that, right? Not a not a specialization. What I mean by that is there are a number of industries, right? If, if we if using another example of of the of the marketplace that, that we have, um, we, we we all have jobs, and 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 on this line, there's a very uh, a number of different um, disciplines, industries represented. You know, Pastor Sederic is in marketing. Um, Johnny Mac knows how to sell cars, right? I know tech, I know technology. Our society supports these different specializations and, and they work well when we stay in our lane. The minute I decide to sell a car or get into marketing, right? We've got, we've got a problem. Maybe the car gets sold, but everybody's exhausted and worn out right in that process. I can't sell a car because I haven't developed those skills. I would be immature as a car salesman. So we know that we, we, we understand the value of that, of that expertise in, in our free market system, but our relationships don't really work that well, right? Being financially mature, but not mature emotionally doesn't get the job done, right? We need a balance. We've got to be well-rounded um, in, in our relationships, especially in the space of maturity. And we need maturity in all areas, right? And so <clears throat> we've got to grow our little bit about a lot of it into a lot of it about ourselves. We need to identify uh, areas uh, that we need to grow in maturity. And if you don't know what those areas are, you can, if, if you're thinking about what, what am, where am I not really strong at, right? Just ask the people in your circle. Because they definitely know your significant other. Ask her to tell you right uh, 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 about yourself. She will have no problem breaking that down, right? But but there are people in you. They they know where you're strong. They know uh, and they know where you're weak at, right? And they'll and they'll break that down. So that's the first step, right? To to growing in maturity in an area, right? Is just to identify where where my weaknesses are. This, this next step, right, is, is the hardest step. It's, the, it's been the hardest step for me, right? And the next, it's after I ask people, right, then I got to listen without a response, right? Just, okay, thank you. Maybe a clarifying question, right? Um, you know, when, when you go to uh, CVS or something, right, and and they give you that long receipt, right? And, and it's got the survey that they want you to fill out on the bottom. Uh, and if you if you fill out the survey, they don't call you and 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 then justify why the service was slow that day, right? Or or get you to negotiate, you know how how you feel about that. So don't do that to your people, right? It, you if you give CBS feedback, they say thank you. Maybe they give you ten percent off or or something like that, and and they keep it moving, right? So when you're when you ask your circle for advice, right? Accept the results. Don't 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 negotiate them. Don't don't beat them up. Don't justify why you did what. Just just accept the results. So step two is is, is to accept. Even if we disagree, humor, humor yourself, humor them, right? By just committing to the process of just investigating and working on that. There's been more than one occasion in my life where I was just like, I don't, I don't really agree. I don't really think that's that 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 that's an issue. I started reading a book that was recommended to me, and 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 I remember the the author was just like, you know, a lot of your emotional issues, you know, come from, from your childhood. I had no childhood trauma. Like I, my childhood was fine. It's, it's not, I don't have any major issues. Nothing really happened. So I don't really feel like that, but I was like, let me just go through it anyway. And then as I went through it, I'm like, Oh, snap, my childhood does have something to do with this. Okay. I'm, I'm starting to see with it. Not that, not that you had to have a bad childhood, but I just had to really go through read the book and, 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 and 
understand that I'm I'm not an expert in that area, right? Kind of kind of humble myself and and hear what but the professional, the the true excuse me, the true doctor in that space has been doing this for 40, 50, 60 plus years, what they really had to say. And 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 when I did that, I, I was able to learn um learn some more about myself. So um the third step to that is is to research, right? Research uh your opportunity. Um, find books, there's podcasts, there's a YouTube, you can Google it. You aren't the first person to ever go through this. Whatever your area of weakness is, right? You, you're not the first person to ever struggle with that. There are many tools out there that, that you can use. And, and, and the internet is, is a excuse me, is a great place uh to do that. There's a quote that I that I heard that I really like, and it says, "There's there's we don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's a blueprint for success, right? There's somebody who's already done what we're trying to do, so we don't have to spend time trying to figure out how to do something. Let's just find someone that does it well, and 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 learn from them, or 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 do what do what they do. Step four is to do the work. Apply what you learn." So do in, in preparing for this, right? I said, okay, well, now I gotta actually do what I'm, you know, what I, I gotta do what I'm saying I'm doing, right? So I, I, I threw it out um the other day to, to to some people in my circle. Um and I asked them, what's an area that I can mature in, right? And one person said, Oh, you're kind of like me, you move around a lot, you're constantly moving. And I was like, Okay, is that, is that is that really immaturity? Um, and so and then and I did what I said, what I just told y'all not to do, right? And so as I'm listening to her finish her statement and, and really ready to respond to how she didn't really follow the instructions, right? Or where she kind of missed the steps, right? I I begin to it begins to dawn on me, right, that maybe moving around a lot is an area that uh of that I that I can mature in. I'm I'm I like to stay busy, right? Um and I'm and I've I've got um I'm already at capacity in my business, right? I've got church responsibilities. So Derek always asks me to do something. Um and if I stay busy with 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 that and, and I've got a trip next week and I've got a date coming up tomorrow and I've got class on this and then I've got a project and I've got this and I've got that. What I'm not focused on is this uncomfortable space, right? That I'm that I'm in, right? I'm not focused on some of the things that I should that maybe that I need to sit down and really think about, right? And I was like, you know what? I do like to stay distracted from the fact that I'm 43 years old and and I don't have a family, right? I don't I don't really want to kind of think about that. Maybe maybe I'm using busyness, right, as escapism. Right. And and we we tend to judge, you know, we'll judge escapism when it comes in the form of alcohol and drugs, right? Oh, you, you know, that, that that that's bad. That's a sin, but but we don't tend to judge it as much when it comes in the form of work um workaholism, right? It's yeah, that's not as bad. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do, brother. You got to make that money. Don't make the money make you. Um, but if the devil can't make you sin, he tries to keep you busy, he tries to keep you distracted right and 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 off and if i'm busy i'm not, and, I, and i got a million things going on am i really listening to what god has to say right am i am i in that in that quiet space with all these good things right but may not be may not be a god thing um the reality of it is uh there's an uncomfortable season and my focus to cannot be to deflect or mitigate this discomfort of, of with with business rather it is in the uncomfortableness right that creates the growth it's sitting in that and thinking about that that that's where i really actually get the opportunity to grow another example of that is i was I had a great job right i knew i wanted to start a business at some point um and I and I get to that, but my job was great. Uh, I had all the perks and everything was going well. 
I wouldn't go start that business when I'm comfortable in, in, a, in a great job. God had to make that situation uncomfortable, right, to promote growth. Um, and, and, and that's where, for me, right, in this, in this maturity, I've got to slow down. I've got to be less busy. I've got to stay in this uncomfortable space, see what God is telling me and telling me where to grow um, and work on that. We all like the sunny days, right? We all like, um, it's comfortable in the sunny days. We can move around like we want to. I, I don't have to slow down because I'm driving uh, in the rain. I don't have to worry about getting wet. You know what I mean? It's it's it's, it's, it's easier for me to move around. It, it's, it's a prettier day, but we've had 60, 70 days without rain, right? We know what that feels like at the end. We're begging for rain, right, at the, at the end of that. Half of California gets on catches on fire when they don't get rain, and then then when the rain comes, right? You know, now I'm calling my yard man. I'm like, dude, this great, this this everything looks crazy now. The 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 water fell and 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 my, everything has has shot up, and my my lawn grows right when when there's rain. It it, it grew much more after some rain than than it did, you know, the whole you know the whole summer and all that, and so that there's there's just there's growth in that in that in the rainy uncomfortable um season i just want to to highlight that um we need balance right we need balance in our um with maturity in every stage of our lives um we it's not okay to be financially mature and and emotionally bankrupt um or to be mature emotionally um, and spiritually, and not have our work done professionally and um, and financially, right? We we got to be kind of even well rounded across um, the board, and and uh, seeing where where we're where we're weak at, seeing where we're where we need to improve, and then improving that, right? Doing that on not necessarily waiting for somebody else to tell you. Grandma used to say, "Baby, if you you know." By the time you smell yourself, everybody else been already smelling you, you know. And so, you know, we we got we got to self evaluate it and, and and look at the ask somebody. You know, don't let them come to you and tell you, well, you must be. You know, you really need to work on that. You know, just work. You know, do that. Let that be an internal part of your process to say, hey, can I can I can I grow in this area? How, how am I doing in this area? What what are my strengths? What what are my weaknesses? Right. Your, your circle, if you've got the right circle, um, they'll, they'll, they'll definitely help you with that. Um, and lastly, I just want to say that when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. First Corinthians uh, 13. Thank you. Dr. Gody, thank you very much for that word. <laughs> uh, we speak those things that be not as though they were. So uh, don't, don't forsake your title. Uh, but I just want to highlight uh, a few of the things that you said. I think you did a wonderful job. Uh, and I want to start at the back and go forward uh, because I think that's key. Uh, we got to learn to... Uh, be comfortable smelling ourselves uh, and, and not be to camouflage or deflect the, the, the smells that we smell. I'm, I'm gonna leave that right there uh, and go backwards on that because when you self-evaluate, that's where the uncomfortableness comes uh, because we don't wanna look at ourselves. We want, uh, and then when everyone looks at us, then we don't wanna hear it. But if we start with ourselves, then it's confirmation from everybody else because we've already done the evaluation. Uh, and so I, I really like that be comfortable in uncomfortable uh, situations because that is where the growth starts. That's what I heard. Uh, the growth starts in the uncomfortable, not in the comfortable. Uh, and when we learn that, then we, we accept challenge. Uh, we don't run away from challenge. We actually embrace it. You know, a fireman runs to the fire, uh, even though he's trained to prevent fires. He runs to the fire. Uh, so, Because how do you know how to prevent if you're not in it? 
And so when we learn that about our lives, then we learn how to create that circle around us that keeps us on our toes. Uh, we accept criticism from those who care about us, uh, even though it may hurt, but we know that at the base of it is love. You know, I, I like the scripture where Christ was talking to the disciples when they were trying to deal with the child with the spirit. He said, how long shall I put up with you? How long, how long am I going to, I'm not going to be here all the time. How long am I going to put up with this? But yet and still he did the work. So sometimes chastisement just keeps us on our toes. It's not meant to hurt us. It's meant to help us. And so having a good circle around you to identify your growth areas uh, was number one and listen without response. Isn't that hard for you, uh, Brother Sederic? But anyway, you know, you can just you just can't respond all the time. Sometimes you just got to listen. See, I'm only going to be picking on the pastor. I want y'all to know everybody else is safe, but the pastor is going to be my example. But anyway, you got to you got to sometimes listen. You got to sometimes say, you know what? I got to swallow that because because the self evaluation will tell you they're probably right, but I didn't want to hear it. And so when you hear it, then you know it's confirmed. Uh, commit to the process. Once you know where you got to grow, commit to it. You know, because it's something that, number one, a friend has seen, but also that friend may have been called by God to show it to you. And when you recognize it like that, then you see where your growth is and then research your area of growth. Don't say, I just need to grow, and then just think that you're going to sit on the end of the bed and start growing. No, research your growth. What is it going to take to grow? What do I have to give up to grow so that I can't be all that God's called me to be? And then do the work. If we don't want to work, then don't ask the question. If you don't want to grow, don't ask, where can I grow? If you don't want to be better, then don't, if you don't want to be better, then don't ask how to be better. Don't do it for somebody else. The first person you got to do it for is for yourself. I tell all the people, the, no, not all the people, but the people that I counsel, I tell them all the time, the first line of communication is not with your partner. The first line of communication is with yourself. Before you say something to somebody else, rehearse that with yourself. Not playing what they're going to say in your head, but, but re rehearse your words. Rehearse how you're going to say what you're going to say so that it comes out in the manner in which you want it to and you can then determine the outcome of the conversation. So in our maturity and in our growth, we have to know first where we want to go. Where do we want to mature? Where are the areas that we need to mature? Then we ask someone else and confirm what we may already know. So then it's easier to do the work, even though it's uncomfortable. Dr. Godey, you did a great job uh, to remind us that maturity can be uncomfortable, but without uncomfortableness, we can't mature. And so with that, let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you for the word on today. We thank you for Charles Goldie and what he has given us and, and, and what you have given to him, not only to help us to mature, but also in the words that he spoke to us, it helps him to mature as well. Father, we just ask right now in the name of Jesus that as we face this day, that you show us the areas that we need to grow. Bring those around us that will help us grow. And then as we learn how to grow, help us to go so that we can grow someone else. We thank you for all the men and women that are on this call. We thank you for those who had a desire to be here but could not because it is in that desire that they may be here the next time. We thank you, we praise you, we magnify you, we adore you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray, amen.